Bonjour à tous et bienvenue dans Learn French with Vincent, apprenez le français avec Vincent. And this is unité 16, leçon A. And in this lesson, we'll see together, so les adjectifs, and we'll focus a little bit more on le genre, so the gender, when you change the gender of the adjective. So, the whole concept is to see how the adjectives will change when you've got, well, the masculine form, and then you want to put the feminine form, okay? So, the main rule is that if you want to put, well, the feminine form, you should just add a, so la voyelle a, at the end of your adjective. Okay, but it's, as usual in French, it's a rule, and we've got many, many, many exceptions. Okay, but then this is the main uh, concept. This is the idea. Uh, you put a at the end, and it should be uh, the feminine form. Okay, so we'll see in this video, of course, uh, some exceptions. And actually, it's quite interesting because in even if the in the subgroups we've got some exceptions. Okay, so but then don't worry. Try your best, and we'll, you you'll see it will go fine. And uh, well, first example. So if we focus on the, the the regular ones, okay. So like français, for instance. So il est français, okay. And if we follow the main rule, elle est française. Okay, so français here, you get this final S that you don't pronounce, so français. And then when you put this final E here, you will get française. Okay, so français, masculin, française. And then another example, joli. And you get, il est joli, elle est jolie. Okay, so you get the masculine form, joli like that and then you just respect the rule uh, that tells you that you should put this final e at the end okay and then you get joli okay so you can see that you put this e, but then you don't pronounce it okay so it's joli so basically the two adjectives masculine joli and feminine joli are pronounced the same way and then we get grand okay so example Il est grand, elle est grande. Okay, so we've got a little bit the same situation here as we had previously with français and française because we don't pronounce the final s in français and it's exactly the same thing. This final d is not pronounced. Okay, so grand and then the feminine form grande. Okay, so you put this e uh, and then you get the sound d, d, grande. Okay, il est grand. Elle est grande. And then we get petit. Il est petit. Elle est petite. Okay, exactly the same idea. Final T is not pronounced. And then when you add this E at the end, you get the sound T, T, petite. Okay, il est petit. Elle est petite. All right, so let's see now. The meaning of the adjective, so français, and then we get joli, and then we get a grand, and finally petit. Okay, so of course we've got some exceptions, as I said. So if your adjective at the masculine form is ending with s, okay, as we saw, uh, normally you should have this. At the end, so gris, grise, okay, mauvais, mauvaise. But then keep in mind that in some cases, like for gros, you will have to double the S, okay, so you will get gros and then gros, okay, same thing for bas, bas, okay, so as I said, we've got some exceptions, okay, so gros will become gros, and then ba will become bas. The meanings are, so, gris, and then mauvais, gros, ba. 
Let's see now when your adjective is ending with a. So the idea is that, as you can see, if you've got already at the end a, well, basically you cannot add another one, okay, because anyway, you wouldn't pronounce it. So you just keep it like in the masculine form, okay, so you get jeune for the masculine and you get jeune for the feminine, so exactly the same form, okay? Admirable, and then for the feminine you will get admirable, the same form. Drôle, and the feminine, drôle. Formidable, formidable, okay? So it's quite simple if you get this final e, Okay, then you don't add anything, you don't modify it, you just keep it like at the masculine form. Okay, so let's see now the meaning. So, jeune, admirable, drôle, formidable. If your adjective at the masculine masculine, sorry, is ending with a accent aigu, like here, so a. So in that case, you will just add this final a, uh, okay? But then the thing is that you don't pronounce it. So phonetically, you will get exactly the same form. So masculine form, animé, and then the feminine form, animé. Okay, you don't pronounce this a, uh, but then you should write it. Cassé, cassé, adopté, adopté, invité, invité. Okay, so quite simple. You just need to add this E at the end, but then you don't pronounce it. Okay, so let's see now the meanings. Animé. Cassé, adopté, invité. And now, if your adjective is ending with a air, you should keep in mind that you will have to modify it a little bit more than previously, so you Actually, put this accent grave here, and then you just add this E uh, at the end, okay? And then the sound will change quite much, because if you think about the masculine form, you pronounce it premier, okay? Premier. And then for the feminine form, you will get première, okay? So it's open, this E eh sound. Première. Premier. Première. And then second example, dernier, okay, and you will get dernière, all right, so keep in mind that you should put this accent grave, and then you pronounce it like a, eh, okay, and then you add this e uh, at the end. Premier, dernier. So, e uh, er again, I thought it might be interesting to see two other adjectives. So, léger, so exactly the same category. Remember, you put this accent grave and then you add E uh, at the end. Légère. Étranger. And you will get étrangère. Okay, for the meaning, léger. And then, étranger. So if you get adjectives ending with e e r or then e e t, you will get the same rule as we had previously. So you will have to put this accent grave and then just add this e at the end. And so journalier will become journalière or then inquiet will become 
inquiet. Okay, so in that case, it's already open the sound inquiet. Okay, so you only hear the T inquiet. Okay, so journalier will become journalière, and then inquiet will become inquiet. Okay, so for the meanings, journalier, and then inquiet. So let's see now if your adjective at the masculine form is ending with F. So we'll take this first example, neuf. So basically this F will need to disappear, disappear sorry, <laughs> and you will uh, put V and then E instead. Okay, so you will get neuf, that will become neuf. Okay, neuf and then neuf. Okay, and then as well, sportif will become sportive. Okay, so F is going away, and then you put V uh, instead. Okay, so for the meaning, neuf, sportif. So what if your adjective is ending with GU? It's quite rare, but it does happen. So let's discover two examples. And the first one is aigu. Okay. And then the feminine form will be aigu. So phonetically, it is exactly the same thing. Okay. But then you should put this tremma here on the top of your U and then remember to put this a. Uh, at the end okay but then you don't pronounce anything because it is exactly the same so aigu will become aigu another example is ambigu and it will become ambigu okay so you don't modify the way to pronounce them you only need to put this tréma on the top of u and then e uh, at the end and the meaning is aigu Ambigu. If your adjective is ending with L, okay, but not AL, okay, so L. Nul will become nul. So phonetically it's the same, but then you double the L and you put a at the end, okay, so nul and then nul. Phonetically it is the same thing. Same thing here, artificiel will become artificiel. You pronounce it the same way, but then you double the L and then you put a at the end. Okay, and the meaning nul, artificiel. So what if your adjective is ending with a L? Okay, so let's see now. It will be quite simple because in that case it does mean that it will follow the main rule that we had uh, at the beginning of the video. So you just need to add this a uh, at the end. Okay. But then phonetically it's quite interesting because you don't uh, make any difference. You will get so général at the masculine form and it will be exactly the same thing at the feminine form. Général. Okay. So général masculin, général féminin. And then fatal, feminine form, you just add this final e, uh, but then phonetically it's the same, fatal. Okay? So, général, and then fatal. If your adjective is ending with n, okay? So let's see now. In that case, so I took this quite useful adjective, bon, you will have to double the N, like you see here, and then you put this E uh, at the end. Okay, so bon will become bon. Okay, so the sound is changing quite much because here you've got this nasal, bon, okay, and then bon, okay, bon, bon. 
and then another example mignon will become mignon okay same thing here nasal mignon and then when you put the feminine form mignon okay so let's see the meaning is so bon and then mignon if your adjective is ending with t in that case we will see that you will have to double the t like we have in this example coquet will become coquette okay but think about that this is the rule but <laughs> it's quite interesting because we've got so many exceptions that in some i mean somehow the exceptions are uh you can find more exceptions than the the one that will follow the rule so i know it's strange but then so keep um keep in mind that um the main idea is to get the sound et okay so whether you will get it like that so by putting two t and then e at the end or then like we do here so we put this accent grave here and then te so phonetically it's the same okay so it's et and then et okay so that's the reason why you will have in some cases double t here and then in other cases you will have this accent grave te okay so discret will become discrete okay and then let's see complet will become complete and then inquiet will become inquiète okay so remember the same idea the idea is to get this sound et okay so whether you put it like that okay coquette or then you put it like that with the accent discrète complète inquiète okay and the meanings are coquet discret complet inquiet what if your adjective at the masculine form is ending with c well let's see this example public so you can see that you get this final c and then you pronounce it huh? public okay so you will have to change it so you take it away and then you put this q u e instead and well phonetically it is exactly the same thing so public at the masculine form feminine form public the same okay public public second example laïc laïc so you need to modify it yes you need to take away the c and then put q u e but then phonetically if you pronounce it you you pronounce it exactly the same way okay so let's see now the meaning public laïc What if your adjective is ending with e u r? So let's see now. Joueur, so it will become joueuse. Okay, so you take away this e u r and then you change away. You change it and you put e u s e. Okay, so joueur is becoming joueuse. And in the same way, travailleur is becoming travailleuse. Okay, so E -U -R is going away and then you put e -U -S -E, euse. joueur joueuse travailleur travailleuse and the meaning joueur travailleur oops <laughs> i made a mistake um okay so we'll put the full thing so now it will be more clear so if your adjective is ending with T E U R, okay. Ter. So in that case, we've got two different possibilities, and the first one is here. Chanteur will become chanteuse, 
Okay, so we'll basically follow the rule that we had previously. So you just take away the uh, UR and you put a uh, USE, so TEUS. And it's just because, um, well, as you can see, I, I wanted to put the verb, so it was not a surprise. Um, the verb is chanter, okay, and it's with T E R. And as the verb is with T E R, so basically you can change it like that and follow the rule that we had uh, previously, okay. But then in some cases, you get directeur, for instance, and directeur, well, the verb is not directé doesn't exist so it's dirigé okay and in that case it means that it's not ending with t -E -R, so the feminine form will not be as we had previously here okay so it will be something different and it will be trice okay so directeur will become directrice okay so if your verb is ending with t -E -R, like for chanter so chanteur will become chanteuse but then if it's not ending with t -E -R, like here dirigé so it will become trice directeur directrice okay now it's coming at the right time so this is the translation chanteur and then directeur So what if your adjective at the masculine is ending with G? And it's actually quite interesting because I've been trying to find uh, more adjective, but it was didn't really have the time anyway. But then this one is quite useful. So uh, keep in mind that long, in that case, you will have to add this U and then E. Uh, okay, so long remember you don't pronounce the final G, will become long. Okay, so phonetically it's long. G -g -g -g. Long. So long, masculin, long, féminin. And this is the meaning. I hope it was uh, interesting and useful. Uh, so it was my first uh, video that I've been doing after this long break. So, But then if you want more videos, then uh, YouTube is here and the channel is Imagier. And well, of course, uh, it would be nice if you like me on Facebook because I'm right here. Remember, if you want some sounds, so I've been starting to put the sounds in, uh, well, SoundCloud. So you can try to find them there. And then all the material that I've been doing so far is located at the following address, www.imagier.net. Have a great day. Bye bye. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. Apprenez le français avec Vincent. And this is Unité 16, Leçon B. And in this lesson, we'll work together on les adjectifs, et plus précisément, l'adjectif épithète. Okay, so let's see now what it means. Because this is the first question, what is l'adjectif épithète? Well, you will see that it's quite simple, because it is an adjective, so an adjectif associé à un nom. Okay, so you will associate this uh, adjective to a noun. All right, so we've got the example here, une femme célèbre. Okay, so if you take the time to look, you've got une femme, a woman, and after that you've got this célèbre. Okay, so it's an adjective, and you can see that it's directly connected to une femme. So this is what we call an adjective epithet. Okay, and the translation is here. So let's see a few examples now. Un animal domestique. So same thing here. You've got domestique right after your noun. Un grand appartement. So it's quite interesting because you've got here grand. So the adjective before the noun. And then the last example. Un nouveau livre. Same thing here. You get nouveau before your noun. Okay, and for the translations?
So, it's actually quite interesting because we've been noticing that when we talk about l'adjectif epithet, we will have two situations. The first one will be anteposé, so it means that this adjective will come before the noun, okay, avant le nom. Or then, the second option, it's uh, actually when the, the adjective is coming after the noun, so it's postposé, so après le nom. Okay, so whether anteposé or then postposé, before the noun, after the noun. Okay, so let's see now a few examples when it's anteposé. And the first one, un bon ami. Okay, so we can see that here you've got this adjective, bon Okay, and then you pronounce it bon ami when you make this link. Second example, une belle femme. So same thing here, you get this adjective, belle, okay, the feminine form, because you get une femme, but then it's coming before femme. And for the translations, and then we saw that it could come also after, so it will be postposé, okay, and in that case we've got a simple example here, un travail difficile, okay, so you get difficile, and difficile is coming after travail, okay, but it's directly coming, so you get nothing between the two, and then une expérience enrichissante, same thing here, the adjective is coming right after the noun, and of course you get the feminine form here, because Une expérience is feminine. And for the translations... Voilà! I hope it was clear, it was quite short but quite useful. If you want more videos then you know where to go. Facebook is waiting for you also. Uh, if you want some sound then I will put the all, uh, all are try to put all the units uh, in SoundCloud, SoundCloud as well, and then the main site is waiting for you, and it's right here, www.imagier.net. Have a great day. Bye bye. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. Apprenez le français avec Vincent, and this is Unité 16, leçon C. And in this lesson, we'll work together on l'adjectif attribut, okay? So we saw in the previous video l'adjectif epithet, and then we'll continue uh, with l'adjectif attribut in this video, okay? So the question is, what is l'adjectif attribut? Uh, well, l'adjectif attribut, well, clearly it's an adjective, of course, and it will appear or it will be in or dans un groupe verbal. So it means that you will need to have at least one verb that will somehow introduce this adjective. Okay? So in most of the cases uh, you will see uh, this adjective introduced by être, to be, okay? But then it could be other verbs as well, but then keep in mind that être is quite often used. Okay? So let's see now a few examples. The first one, le canapé est confortable. So you can see that in this structure you get here the subject, le canapé, then you get the verb est, and then you get this adjective. So adjective, this adjective is introduced by être, so est here, so it does mean that it's an adjective attribut. Okay? Le canapé est confortable. La vue est est magnifique. La vue est magnifique. So exactly the same situation here. You've got la vue, then you've got the verb être, and after that you've got your adjective here. Les enfants sont calmes. Okay, same thing here. You've got les enfants, then you've got the verb être, and the adjective is coming after. So you can see, uh, you cannot see here uh, the feminine form, because it's actually the same form as the masculine, but keep in mind that you should put the feminine because it's an adjective, and then if this adjective uh, will change, changes when you put the feminine, then you should definitely put the feminine form here when you get the feminine. Here you get the plural form, so basically you just put this S at the end, okay? So for the translations, here they come.
Let's take a few examples again. So, le directeur est autoritaire. La voiture est bleue. Okay, so in that case it's quite interesting because you can see that normally we've got the, well, the adjective bleu. So it's B-L-E-U for the masculine form or the basic form if you want. And then in that case we've got la voiture, so it's feminine. So you should put this uh, at the end. Okay, phonetically it doesn't exist because you don't pronounce it. So you get bleu as you would get uh, for the masculine form, okay, but still you need to write it here because it's the feminine form. La voiture est bleue. And then, les légumes sont délicieux, okay, les légumes sont délicieux. So, in all these cases, autoritaire, bleu, and then délicieux, well, these adjectives, les adjectifs, are what we can call adjectif attribut. Let's see the translations now. Il devient nerveux. So in that case, it's quite interesting because you can see that I didn't put être, but then I did put this devenir, to become. Okay? Il devient Nerveux. Elle reste calme. Elle reste calme. Ça semble difficile. Ça semble difficile. Okay, so in these cases, even if we don't have être, so as I said in the introduction, so we've got other verbs, devenir, to become, rester, to stay, and then sembler, to seem, okay, so in these cases also you will introduce some adjectives after and these adjectives will be what we call adjective attribut, okay, so let's see now the translations. Something that you should remember, so attribut, so this adjective attribut, uh, can be attribut du sujet, like we have been seeing so far, so ce film est bon. Okay, so in that case you've got the subject, ce film, and then you've got the verb, and after that you've got this adjective. Okay, but keep in mind that it's also possible to have this attribut as attribut de l'objet, okay, so it does mean that, well, still you've got a sentence, you've got a verb, okay, but then the adjective will not be related or connected to the subject, okay, but it will be connected to this object, so when we call the object, it's uh, the grammatical object, okay, so je trouve ce film bon, well, in that case, also this bon will be adjective attribut. Translation, so, ce film est bon, and then, je trouve ce film bon. And this is it. I hope it was clear for you. Uh, remember that you can find quite many videos on the YouTube channel. Facebook is waiting for you. If you want some sound, it's possible. And then, the website is waiting for you, www.imagier.net. Have a great day. Bye bye. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. Apprenez le français avec Vincent. And this is Unité 16, leçon D. And in this lesson, we'll work together on what we call l'adjectif apposé ou détaché. Okay, so we continue the series of, uh, well, that cover les adjectifs. So let's start now. So l'adjectif apposé ou détaché. It's actually quite simple because uh, these adjectives will be connected to what we call un groupe nominal. So clearly when we talk about un groupe nominal, we're not only referring um, to one noun, okay, but it's a noun with something. So it could be an adjective, for instance, and that's what will happen in the 
examples uh, I will show in this video. Okay, and the concept is that uh, you want to actually make a distinction. So you will make first you will have your noun and then what comes with it. So adjective, and if you want to introduce after that this adjective apposé or then détaché, uh, then you will so when you speak you will make une pause so break or then you will make une intonation so you will change your voice okay to make it clear that it's something different something that you will add to what you've been introducing previously okay when you write in a way it's more simple because you only need to put une virgule a comma okay so keep in mind that when you when you speak then you will have to make a little break so in petit pause or then you will change uh, your voice okay and then if you speak then you will put une virgule okay so in that case well we will see how it will be when you write so ce jeune homme and then here you get your comma and then you get this habillé en rouge after that the comma is coming and the sentence continues okay so that's the concept you first have your first part here ce jeune homme this young man okay and then you put this comma and after that you put this part that we'll call adjective apposé then the comma and the sentence continues okay so we are talking about that and nothing else okay Let's see another example here. So, cette vieille femme, so same thing here, cette vieille femme, this old lady, cette vieille femme, and then you want to add something more, so agréable et souriante, you put your comma, and the sentence continues. Okay, so this is what we are talking about in this video. It's quite simple okay nothing really uh, <laughs> special but still you know I, I thought it might be interesting to make a little video on that because in some cases people maybe tend to forget that you get to make a little you know something between the first part and the rest of the sentence okay so let's see now the translation Okay, so remember that when we talk about adjective apposé ou détaché, so we will talk about what we've been seeing so far. And remember, if you speak, then you will have to make a little break or then you will have to change your voice, okay, to make it clear that it's something you want to add. And then if you want to write, then as we saw, you will have to put this comma before and after, and then your sentence can continue okay that's it if you want more videos then the youtube channel is waiting for you facebook also if you want more sound then you know where to go and the website is right here www.imagier.net have a great day bye bye Bonjour à tous et bienvenue dans Apprenez le français avec Vincent Learn French with Vincent and this is Unité 16 leçon Oh. And in this lesson, we'll see together l'adjectif relationnel. Okay, so we continue this long series uh, covering les adjectifs, but I think it's quite useful. And it's maybe better to make some little videos like that covering only one type of adjectif. Okay, so in this video, it will be l'adjectif relationnel. Okay, so let's start now. So l'adjectif relationnel, I thought it might be useful to just start with examples okay so you get the first one here you've got a sentence un déplacement du président okay so it will be i mean it's possible to use that un déplacement du président but what if you would like to replace du président and put an adjective instead and that's exactly what we're talking about when we're talking about l'adjectif relationnel okay so un déplacement du président you don't want to use du président well you just put the adjective présidentiel so you get un déplacement présidentiel all right another example 
would be un député de la République. And in that case, it's exactly the same. It's possible to use that, un député de la République, but then if you want to use, instead of de la République, an adjective, so un adjectif relationnel, it is possible you will get un député and then républicain, so the adjective. Okay, so in these cases, it's actually quite clear and not that difficult because you just replace du président with présidentiel or then de la république with républicain. Okay, so we'll see another, oh sorry, uh, the translation first. Okay, so we'll see now two other situations where you can replace uh, well parts in that case un ordinateur qu'on peut porter okay so you've got here this relative so qu'on peut porter and in that case you just want to well replace this qu'on peut porter with an adjective and it's actually quite simple because in that case qu'on peut porter well you take porter and then you transform it and you put the adjective so it will be portable un ordinateur portable. Okay, so basically, un ordinateur qu'on peut porter, a computer that one can carry. Okay, but then, of course, it's a bit heavy. And in that case, you would like to have something, well, lighter than qu'on peut porter. Well, it just puts the adjective portable. Un ordinateur portable. Okay, so we'll see another example. Un écran qu'on peut toucher. And in that case, it's exactly the same. We don't want to use qu'on peut toucher because it's quite heavy and the sentence is not that light <laughs> as we would like it to be. So we will put tactile, so the, adject the adjective that will replace this qu'on peut porter. So un écran tactile. Okay, so let's see the translations now. Okay, so keep in mind that, as we had previously all then here, you've got some parts uh, that are uh, possible to keep if you want. Okay, so un ordinateur qu'on peut porter, it's totally correct. Un écran qu'on peut toucher, it's correct also. But then you want to have it, uh, to put it uh, in such a way that it will be only one adjective instead of all these words, then portable, un ordinateur portable, and un écran tactile. Okay, so keep in mind that when we're talking about l'adjectif relationnel, well it must be of course related en relation avec le nom, and then as we saw in the first part it can be complément de nom, or in the second part it can be une relative. Okay, and that's it. If you want more videos then it's right here. Facebook is also waiting for you. Sounds are available on SoundCloud and then the website is waiting for you www.imagier.net Did I forget one W? Maybe. <laughs> Have a great day. Bye bye. Bonjour à tous et bienvenue dans Apprenez le français avec Vincent. Learn French with Vincent. And this is Unité 16, leçon F. And in this lesson, we'll continue this long series covering les adjectifs. And in this video, we'll focus on les adjectifs or l'adjectif épithète antéposé. Okay, so we've been seeing already uh, something covering l'adjectif épithète. Okay, because if you remember correctly, when we're talking about l'adjectif épithète, we are talking about an adjectif associé à un nom. So, an adjective that is associated to a noun, okay, like in this example, une femme célèbre. So, you have your adjective here, okay, directly connected to the noun. You don't have any verb between the between them, okay? So, and in it in this case, we are talking about adjective epithet. Okay? So, the second thing is that we're talking now about Adjectif épithète antéposé. And then antéposé well means that this adjective will be placed before the noun. Okay, so like in this example, un jeune homme. Un jeune homme. So in that case, you've got your jeune, young. 
okay adjective here and as you can see it's before your noun un jeune homme and in that case jeune we will talk here about adjective epithet anteposé so let's see first sorry the translations une femme célèbre and then un jeune homme So you should remember that when we're talking about this category of adjectives, well, we will talk about adjectives that are so courant, you use them quite often, and they are really, really short adjectives. So not long, not, not long adjectives, but really short ones, okay? And then, uh, caractérisé par des adverbes. So if you introduce these adjectives with adverbs, so before, you will... If you want to put si, trop, très, or then to. So in that case, remember that you will have to put them before the noun. And the last category is actually quite useful because we're talking about adjective numéro. Okay, so when we talk about the numbers, in that case, well, you will, you will have to put them before the noun as well. Okay, so let's see now a few examples and the first category. So we were talking about really common adjectives that are really, really short. Okay, so the first one, un jeune homme. So as we had previously. Second one, une belle ville. Then, un bon déjeuner. Un mauvais film. Okay, so you can see that in all these cases, jeune belle, bon, and then mauvais, they are placed before the noun. Homme, ville, déjeuner, and then film. Okay, so let's see the translations now. Un jeune homme, une belle ville, un bon déjeuner, un mauvais film. Okay, so second category, remember, when you introduce them with adverbs like si, trop, très, or then to. Un tout petit bébé. Okay, so here we've got tout, so it's an adverb, and then we've got petit, so the adjective. And so just because we combine the two, then we will have to put them before the word or the noun, so bébé. Un tout petit bébé. Remember that when we're talking about this category, it's always possible when we speak to put that after as well. Un bébé tout petit. Une très belle maison. Same thing here. You get the adverb très and then the adjective belle. Okay, so you should put them before the noun maison. But as we saw previously, when we talk, it's always possible to change that and to put that after. Une maison très belle. Okay? So keep in mind that in blue here, un tout petit bébé, une très belle maison, well, that's what normally you should do and what normally you should write. So they should come before the noun, like here and here. Okay? But when you talk, well, as you know, oral French is a bit more flexible, so it's not that strict, so it is possible to put them after the noun. Un bébé tout petit, une maison très belle. For the translations. And the third category was les adjectifs numéro. Okay, so let's see now. Le premier baiser, and then la première invitation, so keep in mind that as you will put them before, you will have to, because there are adjectives, to change them according to the gender, so in that case it's masculine, so you don't modify it, you just put premier, <coughs> sorry, and then here, <coughs> my god, here you've got, uh, well, the feminine form, so it's la, Okay, and then you will have to put the feminine form of premier and it's première. Okay, so la première invitation. Okay, so let's see now. La troisième porte and then le dernier 
restaurant. Okay, so keep in mind that because we are talking about, well, numbers, so premier, première, or then troisième, and then dernier, in that case, they should come before the noun. Okay, so let's see now the translations. Okay, I hope it was clear. Now I need a glass of water. So if you want more videos, then uh, the channel is waiting for you and it's right here. Uh, Facebook also, if you want to like me, I will be so happy. Uh, if you want some sounds, then uh, it's right here. And the website is waiting for you, www.imagier.net. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bonjour à tous et bienvenue dans Apprenez le français avec Vincent. Learn French with Vincent. And this is Unité 16, leçon G. And in this lesson, we will work together on l'adjectif épithète postposé. Okay, so let's start now. So when we talk about l'adjectif épithète postposé, first, well, you should know what an adjectif épithète is, and it's actually not that difficult L'adjectif epithet is an adjective that will be associated to a noun. Okay, so let's take this example here. Un homme joyeux. Okay, so you've got a man and then joyeux, joyful. So this adjective is coming right after your noun. Okay, you don't have any verb, you don't have anything between the two them. So it's what we call an adjectif epithet. Okay, and the second thing that we should will clarify it's postpose and when we talk about postpose so we will talk about an adjective that will be placed after the noun okay so like in this example here une chemise bleue okay so bleu here is coming after your noun okay so it's what we call postpose translations are here un homme joyeux and then une chemise bleu Okay, so for these adjectives epithet postposé, we will talk about les adjectifs that will express, well, what we call in qualité objective. So if you want to talk about the color, for instance, the appearance, the shape, la forme, or then l'origine, the origin, or the nationality. So in these cases, well, these adjectives will respect uh, this rule. So they will come right after your noun and they will come, well, clearly right after, so and not before. Okay, so the second category, uh, we are talking about les participes passés. So we've been seeing that previously, um, participes passés, so in English it's uh, past participles. And then les participes présents, present participles. So normally, les participes passés, remember, we use them when we construct these compound tenses. Okay, but then these particip participles, sorry, the past and the present, they can be used as well. Not all of them, but some of them can be used as well as adjectives. And well, in these cases, you will put them after your noun. Okay. After that, we will talk about les adjectifs uh, that will be um, or that will have before them an adverb. Okay, but we're not talking about uh, trop, très, tout, and si, because we've been seeing that in the previous video that uh, these four adverbs are actually a bit tricky. Okay, but then all the other adverbs that will be placed before your adjectives, well, actually, it will be quite simple but then you will put them after your noun, okay? After that, we're talking about les adjectifs relationnels. So we've been doing videos concerning that, so it should be quite simple to handle. And then les adjectifs, that will be followed by a complement, donc qui sont suivis d'un complément, okay? So in all these cases here, so, adjectif qui exprime une qualité objective, les participes passés et une, participe, et une partie des participes présents utilisés comme adjectifs, les adjectifs qui sont précédés d'un adverbe, les adjectifs relationnels, 
les adjectifs qui sont suivis d'un complément. So in all these cases, keep in mind that these adjectives will come after the noun and not before, okay? After. So let's take a few examples now. So the first category, we're talking about les adjectifs qui expriment une qualité objective, couleur, apparence, forme, origine ou nationalité. Un vélo rouge, une table ovale, un touriste australien. Un vélo rouge, une table ovale, un touriste australien. Okay, so you can see that in all these cases, they are coming after your noun. Second category, remember, we were talking about les participes passés, so past participles and then present participles, okay? But used as adjectives, so let's see now. Un homme organisé, une maison détruite, un clown chantant, une soirée fatigante. Un homme organisé, une maison détruite, un clown chantant, une soirée fatigante. Then, remember, les adjectifs précédés d'un adverbe. So, in these cases, you can see that un voyage incroyablement cher. So, cher is the adjective here, okay? But then, you've got this incroyablement, so it's an adverb, and it's coming before your adjective, so you will have to put the two of them after your noun here. Un voyage, and then the rest is coming. Incroyablement cher. Une réceptionniste extrêmement efficace. Des restaurants rarement bons. Okay, so in all these cases, as you can see, we've got here incroyablement an adverb, extrêmement another adverb, and then a rarement an, ad an adverb as well. And they just go before your adjective. So, translation, un voyage incroyablement cher, une réceptionniste extrêmement efficace, des restaurants rarement bons. And then we were talking about les adjectifs relationnels. So I've been making a video regarding les adjectifs relationnels, so it should be, it shouldn't be that difficult. Une visite présidentielle, des députés européens, and then un ordinateur portable. Okay, so in all these cases, if we're talking about adjectifs relationnels, then they should come right after your noun. Une visite présidentielle, des députés européens, un ordinateur portable. And then we were talking about as well les adjectifs suivis d'un complément. So let's see one example now. Un conseil bon à suivre. So it's actually quite interesting because in that case you can see that you've got your noun, un conseil, then you've got your adjective, bon, but then it introduces, or it introduces, sorry, <laughs> un complément, and this complément is à suivre. Okay, so in that case, you've got your adjective and the rest, so uh, le complément. So of course, you should put them after your noun. Okay, un conseil, bon à suivre. Une voiture facile à conduire. Une fillette pleine de vie, des exercices difficiles à faire. Okay, so in all these cases, you can see that the adjectives are introducing something more. Okay, so, well, you've got a preposition and after that you've got, well, a verb here and then a substantive here and a verb here as well. Okay, but then in all these cases, keep in mind that they should come Definitely before the noun. Uh, sorry, after the nouns. <laughs> okay, so translation. 
un conseil bon à suivre. Une voiture facile à conduire. Une fillette pleine de vie. Des exercices difficiles à faire. So remember that we've been seeing all the adjectives that uh, belong to this group, epithet postposé. So we were talking about les adjectifs qui expriment une qualité objective. Then les participes passés et une partie des participes présents utilisés comme adjectifs. Les adjectifs qui sont précédés d'un adverbe, but we're not talking about trop, très, tout, or si. Les adjectifs relationnels, and the last one was les adjectifs qui sont suivis d'un complément. So in all these cases, the adjectives are epithet postposé, so they will come after your noun. Okay? I hope it was clear. Remember, the channel is waiting for you, and then the Facebook page as well. The sound is possible, so I've been putting some of the sounds um, on SoundCloud, so you can go and check it. And www.imagier.net is waiting for you. Have a great day. Bye bye. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. Apprenez le français avec Vincent. And this is Unité 16, leçon H. And in this lesson, we'll see together les adjectifs qui ont trois formes. Okay, so we can start right now. And as you probably know, normally when we talk about adjectives in French, we talk about one form for the masculine and one form for the feminine. At least we're talking about the singular here. Okay, so one form for the masculine and one form for the feminine. In some cases they can be the same, but still we've got one form for each uh, gender. Okay, but we've got, of course, as usual in French, some exceptions. And some adjectives have two forms for the masculine and one form for the feminine. Okay, so we're talking about these two forms for the masculine because it can be quite tricky. Okay, so let's see. And the question is why, of course, we are talking in this case of what we call adjective antéposé. So les adjectifs antéposé are les adjectifs placés devant un nom. So the adjectives that will come before the noun. Okay, and the good thing is that we're talking only about five adjectives for all the French language. We've got only five adjectives that will be irregular, so it's not that much. Okay, so let's see them. The first one is beau, and then after that, we've got fou, then mou, nouveau, and vieux. Okay, so these are the five adjectives that will be a bit strange because they will have two masculine forms. Okay, beau, fou, mou, nouveau, and then vieux. Okay, so let's see the first one. Beau, and so the second masculine form will be belle. Okay, and the feminine form, belle. So it's actually quite interesting because these two forms, so the second masculine form and the feminine form, are phonetically the same. It's belle, okay? So belle, belle. And then beau for the masculine, the first one. And here's the meaning. The second one is, <coughs> sorry, fou. And here is the second masculine form and it's folle. And the feminine form is folle. Okay, same thing here, same pronunciation, but then you write them differently. So masculine, first one, fou, and then the second form, folle. Okay, here is the meaning. Mou, molle, for the second masculine form, and then feminine form, molle. Here is the meaning. 
and then nouveau will give us nouvelle for the second masculine form and then nouvelle for the feminine form. And here is the meaning. And last but not least, vieux will give us vieille and then the feminine form vieille. Okay, so phonetically the same, but then look, you write them differently. Okay, and here is the meaning. So the question is, when do we modify or do we use this second masculine form? Well, the first situation is, of course, so they, they will be coming before the noun, okay? And then it will be according to the first letter of this noun. So as these adjectives will be placed before the noun, the noun that will come after will affect the fact that you will choose whether the first form of the masculine or the second form of the masculine. Okay, and then we're talking now about the words that we will that will start with a vowel. Okay, so if your word is starting with a vowel, then no hesitation, you will have to pick and to choose the second form of the masculine okay and then the second group is actually a bit more difficult because we're not talking about all the words starting with ash okay but only some of them okay but let's say that's a big part of them and in that case when you will have some words starting with ash then you will have to use uh, the second form of the masculine okay so let's start now and see how it will uh, work with beau for instance okay so if we take uh, an example like that a uh, beau paysage well actually you've got this adjective beau here just before and then you've got paysage here it does start with p okay so it does mean that you don't really need to modify it so you just put it like that but of course if you've got a word like um in that case so start with a, it starts with a Ash, okay, and then well, it belongs to the, this group that will require uh, to modify your adjective. So you will have to use the second form for the masculine. So bel, okay, un bel homme. So un beau paysage, and then un bel homme. Okay, so let's see now for fou. Un projet fou. So actually this one is quite interesting because you will put it after but in this case here you will put it before and as it comes before and then the word or the noun that it is related to is starting with a vowel a uh, in that case you will have to use the second form of the masculine un fol avenir okay so un projet fou un fol avenir Then mou, un pain mou, exactly the same situation. You've got your mou coming here, but when you put this form here, and oreiller is starting with a vowel o here, then you will have to modify it. So un mol oreiller. Okay, so un pain mou, un mol oreiller. Nouveau, un nouveau film, okay, so first letter is F, so you don't change, you just put nouveau here, but then un nouvel appartement, appartement start with a vowel A, so nouvel, the second form of the masculine. Un nouveau film, un nouvel appartement. Vieux. Un vieux bateau, and then un vieil homme. Un vieux bateau, un vieil homme. So remember these five adjectives, les cinq adjectifs, and beau, belle, fou, 
fol, mou, mol, nouveau, nouvelle, vieux, une vieille. Et voilà. Uh, if you want more videos, then this is right here. Facebook is waiting for you as well. Many sounds right here. And the website is waiting for you. www.imagier.net Have a great day. Bye bye. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. And this is Unité 16, Leçon I. And in this lesson, we'll see together l'adjectif comme adverb. Okay, so let's start right now. And it's actually quite interesting because normally we tend to think that, well, we will use adjectives like adjectives and only like adjecti adjectives. But in some cases, actually, it's possible to use these adjectives as adverbs. Okay, and so that's exactly what we will see in this video. So keep in mind that to construct this adverb based on this adjective, you will have to well take this adjective and then you take la forme masculine and it will give you this neutral form. Okay, so it means, and this is really important, that le féminin et le pluriel, actually, they won't exist. As you will use this adjective as an adverb, it does mean that you don't do anything, you don't put anything at the end for the feminine or for the plural, you just keep it like that. Okay? So let's see a few examples now. The first one, les oiseaux volent haut. Okay? So you can see that here you've got O, and it's an adjective, but as we connect it directly to the verb voler, okay, so it is an adverb, all right. So it's an adjective that has been changed. Sorry, that has been changed into an adverb, okay. So les oiseaux volent O. La rose sent bon. Okay, so exactly the same thing here. You've got this bon, okay, it's an adjective, but you use it as an adverb. Even if la rose is feminine, you don't put anything at the end. You just keep it like that, bon. Okay, il chante faux. Exactly the same thing, faux, okay, is an adjective used as an adverb. And then, elle travaille dur. Okay, so, les oiseaux volent haut. La rose sent bon, il chante faux, elle travaille dur. Ok, so remember, au, bon, faux, and dur are adjectives that are used as adverbs. So, remember, the way to construct or to make it is, you take your adjective, vous prenez l'adjectif, la forme masculine, and then you will get this adverb, so la forme neutre de l'adverb, and keep in mind that you will never put the feminine at the end or the plural. Ok? And this is it. Merci beaucoup, au revoir, et à bientôt. Have a great day. Bye bye. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. Apprenez le français avec Vincent and this is Unité 16, Leçon J. And in this lesson, we'll see together l'adjectif employé en fonction de nom. And we can start right now. So, it's quite interesting because we've been seeing in the previous video um, well, the situation when you can use uh, an adjective as an adverb and basically it's quite interesting because in this video we, we will discover that it's possible as well to make uh, some nouns uh, based on the adjectives. Okay, So it's actually quite simple. You will just take your adjective 
okay? And then, if it's possible, because it's not possible in all the situations, we will see that, but then, if it's possible, you will get, well, whether une forme masculine or then une forme féminine, or in some situations, you will get both, okay? So, basically, you just put the masculine form of your adjective and you put an article before that, un, or then la forme féminine, and you put an article before that, une, okay, or it could be le and la, and you will get your noun, okay, so it's quite simple, so let's see now, for instance, if we take uh, the example of belle, okay, so it's the adjective, beautiful, and it's the feminine form, all right, and then it's possible to use this as a noun, une belle, okay, une belle, so it means a beautiful lady, une belle, Okay, or then we can take, for instance, this adjective sportif, and in that case here you've got the masculine sportif, and you've got the feminine sportive, all right, and well, you will make un sportif, and then une sportive, so two nouns actually constructed based on the adjectives, all right, for the translation, here it is, belle, une belle, sportif, sportive, so l'adjectif, and then un sportif, une sportive. Jeune, so you can see here that we've got the masculine form and the feminine form, they are the same, but I wanted to put them both anyway. So you will get un jeune, and you will get une jeune. Okay, so you don't change it, you just put the article, un et une, same thing here, vieux, and then vieille, un vieux, and then une vieille, okay? Well, clearly it's not really polite, but you can hear it, so it's used, all right? So, jeune, and then vieux, and vieille, okay? So let's hear now, or let's look at uh, other um, adjectives uh, that will make nouns, so this one is quite interesting because rouge, so we're talking about the colors, okay, so rouge, so it could be green, it could be any anything else, but then rouge, and in that case, well, of course, you get only one possibility because you don't have the masculine and the feminine, so it will be masculine, un rouge, okay, then bon, so in that case, you can use the masculine and the feminine, you're talking about the persons, person who is uh, talented, who is good in something, un bon, une bonne, okay, it can be a, something uh, something else than a person as well, mauvais, un mauvais, une mauvaise, so same thing, it can be for a person or for a thing, mou, un mou, une molle, gentil, un gentil, une gentille, méchant, un méchant, une méchante, okay? So you can see that in all these cases here, you've got the masculine and the feminine, but keep in mind that in some cases, like for the colors here, rouge, it will be only, you know, whether masculine or feminine, in this case, it's masculine, okay? Let's see now the translation, rouge, bon, mauvais, mou, gentil, méchant. That's it. I hope it was clear. Uh, have a great day. Au revoir et à bientôt. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. Apprenez le français avec Vincent. And this is Unité 16, leçon K. And in this lesson, we will see together l'adjectif avec une préposition et un nom ou un infinitif. Okay, so let's see now. So it's actually quite interesting because it is possible to construct and we've been covering quite many many different situations and many type of adjectives and in this video we can see that it's possible to construct a sentence or a structure with an adjective that will be followed by une préposition and then 
un nom, or a noun, or an infinitive, sorry, infinitive form of a verb. Okay? So, adjectif, preposition, and then nom ou infinitif. Okay? So, when we talk about les prépositions, so we think about a, de, or then en, but then keep in mind that in most of the cases, it will be de. Okay, but it's possible with a, de, and en. For instance, je suis content de partir. Okay, so in that case, you can see that you've got this content, okay, and then it's followed by this de preposition and the verb partir. Je suis content de partir. Or then it could be, elle est fière de moi. Okay, so you've got this adjective here, fière, and then de, and in that case, you get moi, so le pronom personnel tonique. Or then it could be, c'est plein de vitamines. Plein, adjectif, de, and then vitamine, substantive, or a noun. Or then, c'est facile à dire. Okay, so in that case, you've got your preposition à, and then the verb dire. So it's the infinitive form. Okay, so, je suis content de partir. Elle est fière de moi. C'est plein de vitamines. C'est facile à dire. Ok, so remember, adjectif, préposition, verbe, adjectif, préposition, pronom personnel tonique, adjectif, préposition, substantif, ou non, adjectif, préposition, verbe à l'infinitif. So, this is the thing that you should really remember. Adjectif, préposition, non, infinitif. And then, in most of the cases, it will be de. And this is it. Merci beaucoup. Have a great day. Au revoir et à bientôt. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent and this is Unité 16, leçon L. And in this lesson we'll see together l'adjectif avec que et une proposition complétive. Okay, so let's see now how it will go. So remember that it will be possible in some cases to construct or to make a structure that will well, that will have uh, l'adjectif and then que after. So remember, this que means that. Okay, and then it will be followed by une proposition complétive. So it does mean that at least one verb or one verb and then complements. Okay, so subject, verb, and complements. So adjectif and then que that and followed by une proposition. Complétive. Okay. The important thing is that uh, most of the adjectives uh, won't match uh, these requirements, so it won't be possible to make this structure with most of them. But we're talking in that case about les adjectifs qui expriment un sentiment. So the adjectives that will express feelings. Okay. Un sentiment, a feeling. All right, so we will see a few examples. And the first one is être content que. Okay, so you can see that you've got the verb to be and then here you've got your adjective and it's followed by que. Okay, and the rest should come. Être désolé que. Exactly the same thing, you've got désolé and then que. Être bouleversé que. Être choqué que, être indigné, que. Ok, so, être content, que, être désolé, que, être bouleversé, que, être choqué, que, être indigné, que. Être fier que, être embêté que, être 
ennuyé que, être gêné que, être embarrassé que. All right, so exactly the same structures. You've got your adjectives. They are followed by que, okay, and then the rest should come. Être fier que, être embêté que, être ennuyé que, être gêné que, être embarrassé que. Être furieux que, être ravi que, être confus que, être déçu que, être mécontent que, être furieux que, être ravi que, être confus que, être déçu que, être mécontent que. One thing important. If you look at this sentence, je suis content que je sois ici. It is a common mistake. Okay? So, it's not possible to have here in the first part, je, and here in the second part, the same person. Okay, so je suis content que je sois ici is not possible. In that case, you will have to change the structure and you will have to put je suis content and then you don't continue with que and the sentence, but then you will put your verb at the infinitive. Je suis content d'être ici. Okay, this is a common mistake. Okay, so try to remember that. So it does work for je, but then I've been putting this example as well because it's exactly the same. If it's tu and then tu, if it's il and il, if it's nous, well, basically, if you've got the same person in the first and the second part, then it doesn't, it doesn't work. Okay, so tu es content que tu sois ici, it's not possible, but then tu es content d'être ici. Okay, uh, je suis content que tu sois ici. Je suis désolé que tu sois ici. Je suis bouleversé que tu sois ici. Je suis choqué que tu sois ici. Je suis indigné que tu sois ici. Okay? So, in all these structures, you can see that it works because you've got je in the first part and then you get tu in the second part. So, they are not the same person, so it's possible. Ok, so, je suis content que, je suis désolé que, je suis bouleversé que, je suis choqué que, je suis indigné que. If you noticed, we are talking here about les adjectifs qui expriment un sentiment. And maybe it rings a bell because unfortunately for you, when we're talking about this structure, que, and then, you express a feeling, un sentiment, then you will have to put le subjonctif right after, okay? And that's probably what you noticed, but then now you can see it more clearly that in all the structures that, or the sentences I've been putting previously, here, here, and here, we've got le subjonctif. Okay, so keep in mind that for this type of structures, when you put this adjective that will express a feeling, then it's followed by que, and then you've got a structure after, you should put your verb here and here at the subjunctive form. Okay? And that's it. I hope it was clear. Have a great day. Au revoir et à bientôt. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent and this is Unité 16, leçon 
M. And in this lesson, we'll see together l'adjectif avec la préposition A et l'infinitif. Okay, so uh, we'll end probably with this video or maybe the next one, this big series concerning les adjectifs, okay, but then I thought it might be useful to actually make this video regarding l'adjectif followed by la préposition A and then un verbe à l'infinitif, so a verb that should be at the basic form, so this infinitive form, okay, and then that, I mean, you should keep in mind that it is really, really, really common. So we use that quite often in French, okay? So adjectif followed by a and then a verb, okay? So we'll see a few examples in this video. The first one, for instance, facile à faire, difficile à annoncer, simple à construire, amusant à regarder, triste à écouter. Okay, so if you look carefully in each situation, you've got this first part, it's an adjective, facile, difficile, simple, amusant, triste, and then you put the preposition à, and then you put your verb at the infinitive form, faire, annoncer, construire, regarder, écouter. Okay, so, facile à faire, difficile à annoncer, simple à construire, amusant à regarder, triste à écouter. Okay, so let's put sentences now. Un travail facile à faire. Okay, so we had already this facile à faire, but then you just put a word or a noun before. Un travail, a work, facile à faire. Une information, so news, difficile à annoncer. Une maison, a house, simple à construire. Un film, a movie, amusant à regarder. Une histoire, a story, triste à écouter. All right, so it's actually quite simple, and it is, it is, it is quite often in French language. Okay, so keep in mind, adjectif, and then you get la préposition à, and then you put your verb at the infinitive form. And that's it. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Au revoir. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. Apprenez le français avec Vincent. And this is Unité 16, leçon N. And in this lesson, we'll see together some adjectives, uh, especially if you want to describe a person, décrire une personne, and it's the first part, uh, because the series uh, or the list is quite long, so I didn't want to make a too long video. So it's the first part, and then we'll do the, the second part a bit later. Okay, so let's start now. Accueillant, accueillante. Okay, so I will pronounce first the masculine form, then the feminine form. So masculine, accueillant, accueillante. Actif, active. Affectueux, affectueuse. Agile, and then it's the same form for the feminine form. Agréable, same thing here. So, accueillant. Accueillante, actif, active, affectueux, affectueuse, agile, agréable, agressif, agressive, aimable, ambitieux, ambitieuse, amusant, Amusante, antipathique, agressif, agressive, 
aimable, ambitieux, ambitieuse, amusant, amusante, antipathique, arrogant, arrogante, astucieux, astucieuse, aventureux, aventureuse, beau, belle, bête, arrogant, arrogante, astucieux, astucieuse, aventureux, aventureuse, beau, belle, bête, câlin, câline, calme, charmant, charmante, compétitif, compétitive, complexé, complexé. So you just add this final E, but then for the feminine form, it's phonetically, it's the same as, as the masculine form. Okay, so, câlin, câline, calme, charmant, charmante, compétitif, compétitive, Oops, sorry, <laughs> it was complexé. I'm going too fast. Courageux, courageuse. Créatif, créative. Curieux, curieuse. Débrouillard, débrouillarde. Décidé. And then décidé, feminine form, but then you don't hear the final E. Uh, okay? Courageux, courageuse. Créatif, créative. Curieux, curieuse. Débrouillard, débrouillarde. Décidé, décidé. Désagréable. Discipliné, discipliné. Drôle. Dynamique. Égoïste. Désagréable, discipliné, discipliné, ok, so you add this final E, you don't pronounce it, drôle, dynamique, égoïste, élégant, élégante, embarrassé, embarrassé, same thing here, final E, you don't pronounce it, ennuyeux, Ennuyeuse, enthousiaste, étrange, élégant, élégante, embarrassé, embarrassé, ennuyeux, ennuyeuse, enthousiaste, étrange, être de bonne humeur. Être de mauvaise humeur, excentrique, exigeant, extraverti. Être de bonne humeur, être de mauvaise humeur, excentrique, exigeant, exigeante, extraverti, extraverti. Faible, faux, fausse, fidèle, fier, fier. So you write them differently, but then phonetically it's exactly the same. Fier, fier. Fort, forte. Okay. Faible, faux, fausse, fidèle. Fier, fier, fort, forte. Fou, folle. Franc, franche. Gauche. Généreux, généreuse. 
gentil, gentille. Fou, folle. Franc, franche. Gauche. Généreux, généreuse. Gentil, gentille. Grand, grande. Heureux, heureuse. Honnête, hostile, hypocrite. Grand, grande. Heureux, heureuse. Honnête, hostile, hypocrite. Idéaliste, idiot, idiote, imposant, imposante, indépendant, indépendante, indiscret, indiscrète. Idéaliste, idiot, idiote, imposant, imposante, Indépendant, indépendante, indiscret, indiscrète. Ingrat, ingrate, insensible, insupportable, généreux, intelligent, intelligente. Ingrat, Insensible, insupportable, généreux, intelligent, intelligente. And this is it. Uh, I hope it was clear for you and useful. Have a great day. Au revoir et à bientôt.